Welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm gonna serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. So first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot hear or see you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you will have access to it within about a week or so. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter, Southern Illinois University. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, as she said, my name is Emily and I work for Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to go over a few um, key points about SIU and then if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. Okay, so at Southern Illinois University, we have between 10 and 11,000 undergrad students, so we are a mid-sized university. Uh, student to faculty ratio is between 13 and 14 to one. But what does that mean for you? That means about 80% of your classes are gonna have less than 30 students and 60% are gonna have less than 19. So we're gonna keep class sizes pretty small for being a mid-size institution. We have over 200 programs and majors for you to choose from. Uh, we do also have a medical school and a law school on our campus. And you have access to that as an undergrad, which really um, lends itself to the fact that we are a tier one research institution. Again, a bunch of jargon, what does that mean? That means every professor that you have has to do research, they have to be published, and they have to present at several symposiums and lectures throughout the year. Um, and in order to do that, they use um, assistance from students. And so a lot of times that is a student work opportunity or an opportunity to put on your resume in terms of volunteer research. So that means that you get to start working with your professors first semester freshman year here at SIU working towards whatever interests you have. And when we think research, we think in the labs, right? Science, math, um, but research can be in history. It could be in English. It could be in education, anything that you would like. Okay, so a couple things that are important to you. Um, we do not have any out of state tuition. We are an in state school, but we do not have any out of state uh, tuition. SIU is located at the southern tip of Illinois, which means that we technically mileage wise are closer to Alabama and Mississippi than we are to Chicago. So it just did not seem to make sense to us to have any out of state tuition. 90% of our students do receive some form of financial aid, whether that's scholarships, grants, loans, and we are able to put over $10 million into our students every year. Um, truth in tuition, so what that means is Illinois state law mandates that we lock in tuition. So your tuition will never go up between your freshman and your senior year of college. Okay, so here are just some of the scholarship opportunities that we have here for you. Automatic admission to SIU starts with a 2.75 GPA. And so if you have that GPA, you can see along um, the screen all of the scholarship opportunities that we have baseline that come automatically to students when they apply. Now, if students do have above a 3.8 GPA, they are eligible for our major merit-based scholarships, um, which could be anything from uh, 7,500 a year to full tuition and fees and housing. Um, so we have lots of scholarship opportunities for our students. Okay, so housing. Currently, SIU, uh, even prior to the pandemic, all of our students had their own rooms. So each student has their own room and then you share a bathroom with one other person. So everything is Jack and Jill suite style. Um, our housing comes with an unlimited meal plan. So you can go in as many times as you want between seven in the morning and eight o'clock at night. Um, and then all the amenities come in with housing as well. Okay, so athletics. We are a Division I um, NCAA school. We fall in the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, 
So anything from football to baseball to basketball, you can get into all of those games for free with your student ID. Um, and then all of our facilities are renovated. So it's pretty cool for our students to go get to um, watch and cheer on our Slukies. Okay, so we have a budget sheet for you right here. Um, we, when I talk to students about budgets and what it costs to go to school, I, we talk about tuition, fees, and room and board. So room and your meal plan, because those are the three mandatory requirements um, to pay to our university. Now, if you were to look us up on Google or USA Today or World News Report um, or Princeton Review, you would see that we probably cost closer to 29,000. That's because those reports include books and supplies and living expenses. And though those things are important to factor in, those do, you don't owe the university. So it's important to just look at what you owe the university first, and then we can factor in those other things later. Okay, so applying to SIU is super simple. Um, all we need is a $40 application fee. And if you don't believe that you qualify for that, we can help you um, with a tuition or uh, excuse me, a application fee waiver. Um, you, we just need your high school transcripts. We don't require test scores to get admitted, but some programs may advise that you have them. Um, so it really just depends, but to, for general admission into our university, we don't require that. Um, and that is all we need to get you admitted to becoming a Saluki. If you feel so inclined, please follow us on our social media. So Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, um, so that way you can follow and see what our students are doing um, to see if this is somewhere where you would fit. I want to thank you guys so much and pass it along to my next colleague. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Spalding University. Hello, thank you guys. My name is Jessica and I am an admissions counselor at Spalding University. Let me pull up my PowerPoint really quick for you guys. All right, so Spalding University, we are a small private liberal arts school located in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so just about two hours from Cincinnati, not too far at all from anybody. I'm actually going to start off. I have a small video I want to show you guys real quick and then we'll get into the rest. <laughs> Starting off, our admissions requirements are pretty simple. We have a automatic admission requirement of a 2.5 weighted GPA and a 20 ACT, or we are also test optional with a 3.0 GPA. Um, so if our students don't automatically meet those requirements, we will then just ask for a personal statement essay in order to learn a little bit more about them, their study habits, uh, why they think Spalding is a good fit, things like that. Um, since we are a small school, it's really important to us to get to know our students better and not just focus straight on those numbers that come from the test scores. So I mentioned in my video that we have a very unique schedule and I think that's the best part of our university is that we have a block schedule instead of a traditional semester system. So how it works is our students will only take one or two classes at a time. They take those classes Monday through Thursday every week for six weeks. At the end of their six weeks, they will take their finals for those two classes, get a whole week off of school, and then come back and do it all over again. All universities are gonna ask that you take five classes a semester in order to graduate in four years. The same thing applies for us. We just let our students break it up a little bit um, differently. It allows for students who want to be student athletes to have the time to balance they can take one class during their season so they can balance travel and uh, work and school and all that. Also, if students have a subject they particularly struggle in, it is a good opportunity for them to 
be able to focus in on that one subject and not be worried about five other classes at the same time. A couple of big breaks that we have are between block two and block three is Thanksgiving break. And then right in the middle of block three, we are gonna have Christmas and New Year. So you get those two weeks off as well. And then being in Louisville, a big break for us is between block five and block six is the week of Derby. So the Kentucky Derby is every year, the first Saturday in May. And so it allows our students to really get to experience what it's like to be in the city at that time. And they're also off school for that whole week, which is really fun. So for scholarship and financial aid, um, our tuition cost is going to be $26,000 a year. And then with room and board, the whole total is going to be $33,000 a year. Now that is just a base number. 95% of our students are not paying their full tuition rate. Um, so starting off from there, I mentioned that our automatic admission requirement is a 2.5 GPA. You can see on the screen that there is a uh, base award that is associated with the 2.5 GPA. Any student who comes in in that uh, GPA category will automatically receive that award next to it. Same thing goes up from there. We have a bonus award for ACT or SAT test scores. So it's not required to get scholarship, but it is a bonus. So if you do well, if you get above an 18 ACT, 950 SAT, you can submit those test scores and we'll give you whatever that test score was times 100. So if you get an 18, it's 1800, 22, 2200, et cetera. Um, so it's a really good chance for students to get a bunch of scholarship money to make it much more affordable. We do offer an out-of-state scholarship for all of our Ohio residents who would live on campus. And that would be 10% off of tuition and room and board as well. So a good opportunity to get a lot of money off of that tuition cost. Some big majors and programs that we have are we have our business administration program, which focuses um, is a general business administration degree with concentrations in marketing, sports management, financial planning. We also have a criminal justice program, which focuses on restorative justice. Um, we have education, elementary, middle, high school, as well as our occupational therapy program. Students can do get their doctorate in occupational therapy in just six years with us, which is really exciting. And then nursing, we are the nursing oldest nursing program in the state of Kentucky. So something we're really proud of. Finally, we are NCAA Division III athletics. So we have over 16 different athletic sports students can be become a part of. Um, and if they're not interested in athletics, it's always a good time to go visit your friends on the field and watch them play um, their sport that they're interested in. And that's all I have for you. Like I said, my name is Jessica and I am an admissions counselor at Spalding. I have my email on the screen. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I will go ahead and pass it on. Thank you so much, Spalding University. Up next, we have Columbia College, Chicago. Hi, thank you. Hold on one second, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my PowerPoint for everyone. Share my screen as well. Okay. All right. So we are Columbia College Chicago. Um, we're located in downtown Chicago in a neighborhood called the South Loop. Um, so we're right in the heart of Chicago. We're across the street from Grant Park, which is where a lot of festivals happen, um, like the Taste of Chicago, um, as well as Lollapalooza. Uh, on the other side of us is where the Chicago Bears plays their game at the Soldier Field. So we're right in downtown Chicago. Definitely more of an urban campus. Um, my name is Katherine Lewis. I go by Kat. Um, I do have this QR code on the screen for anyone who wants to connect with us that way, but I'll also receive your information, of course, a little bit later from OACAC. So a little bit about us. Uh, we are definitely more of a creative art institution. Um, we focus on liberal arts and sciences. We focus on business. Um, we also focus on management. So if you're a really ex creatively expressive student, you're going to love Columbia College. Um, so what does the Columbia experience offer for students, right? Um, we offer the great creative art scene in Chicago, um, this international city, the third largest media market in the country. 
um, many collaborative classes um, across the board. Um, so that means our fashion students can take photography classes or business classes. Our music students can take business classes. So very collaborative across the college. Um, we believe in a hands-on approach from day one, actually, of your major. Um, so instead of front-loading your general education courses, we actually allow you to take gen ed classes while you're taking your major courses starting your very first semester. And then much opportunities for networking and career preparation while you're at Columbia. Just some facts really quickly, we stand at a little bit under 7,000 undergraduate students. We have about 500 graduate students, so we do have a graduate program. 42% of our students do identify as students of color. Um, we have 16% of our students that are first generation and then we usually on average have about 18 students per class. And that is in your larger classes, such as your gen ed, like math, humanities, and sciences. Um, but in your more major specific courses, we even have smaller class sizes than that. Um, this is a list of programs that we do offer. We have actually about 120 programs of study. As you see, they range from media, media and digital art, visual art, performing art, communication and writing, as well as business management. So on our website, columb.edu slash majors, you'll find a breakdown of all of the different programs that we offer at Columbia. We also offer BA, Bachelor of Art programs, BFA, Bachelor of Fine Art programs, BS, Bachelor of Science programs, as well as BMUSE, Bachelor of Music program. Just a little bit of a short breakdown on financial aid. We are a private institution, so in-state students and out-of-state pay the exact same amount for tuition. Um, tuition is $28,756. And if you're looking to stay on campus, it can be anywhere between an additional nine to 13,000, depending on which room style you select. But if you complete an application, we are members of the Common App, but we also have our Columbia application. You fill out a FAFSA for us and you submit a portfolio, even though it is completely optional for our Bachelor of Arts students. It's only required for the BFA and the MUSE. You'll be considered for the maximum amount of scholarships any incoming student can receive at Columbia. And if you'll notice on the screen, 97% of our freshman students do receive an aid package of close to $26,000 and then 96% of our transfer students do receive something close to $25,000. Um, that encompasses federal work study, grants and loans from the federal government as well as internal scholarships from Columbia. Really quickly, um, I wanna let you know how you can apply, right? Like I mentioned, we are a part of the Common App but we also have our own application. We are holistic and we also are rolling admissions. And that means that, hey, we wanna look at you as an individual. So we don't have a set GPA that we're looking for or a set ACT that we're looking for. We do have really high achieving students. So we have an honors program, but we have students that are just right up in the middle and that's totally fine with us. Um, on average, we do see about a 3.3 GPA coming into Columbia. We've always been test optional. So you don't have to submit ACT or SAT. Auditions and portfolios vary by major, as I mentioned, so definitely just reach out to us and we can let you know if your major requires one or not. And scholarship consideration is for all admitted students that do that simple submission of the FAFSA, the application, and then a body of work, as I mentioned in the past uh, slide. So if you want to learn a little bit more, just go to column.edu slash apply and you'll find out all the information that you need to know about our application process. I thank you so much again um, for your time and I hope that this was informative. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me uh, directly or just reach out to the college in general and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Columbia College Chicago. Up next, we have the American Academy of Art College. Um, hello everyone, my name is Bianca Anaya. I'm an alumni from American Academy of Art College as well as a representative. Our school is located at 332 South Michigan Avenue in the vibrant South Loop of Chicago. We're about three blocks away from Millennium Park and the Art Institute Museum, actually a block away, sorry. We're three blocks away from our housing center which is at the University Center. Um, so it's kind of, really awesome. It has two bedrooms, one bathroom. It's about 730 square feet. It has a lot of amenities included like 24-7 security and maintenance, 
Um, it has a full dining center. It has the service desks available, game rooms, um, awesome lounges, and literally everything you need as a college student from media rooms to uh, music practice rooms, everything. So we are a small, private, regionally accredited college that has approximately 300 students currently attending. Classes consist of about 12 to 15 students. So students definitely do get a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities with our instructors. We were founded in 1923 by Frank Young Sr. So we have been around for almost 100 years. We like to offer a lot of activities for our students. All the clubs at our school are actually student run. And they include, let's see if it wants to show. There you go. Um, so they include things like anime club, critique club, oil painting club. And we also offer the school abstraction magazine. Um, one of our biggest events is always Halloween where we encourage students to um, really go out, out creating elaborate costumes. Um, so we give a bachelor's of fine arts degree in commercial art and fine art. So we teach illustration, graphic design, 3D modeling and animation, art direction and photography. And then our painting is with a specialization in oil painting or watercolor painting. Every student, regardless of their intended majors, will take the same courses the first year, and this is the foundations courses. So it includes the fundamentals of art and life drawing. So these um, courses teach students how to depict an object, including a human figure in space, how to apply color theory in the depiction of objects, a lot to do with perspective, and definitely learning those design principles. Another really awesome course is obviously our life drawing course. Um, a lot of times students are going to be working with their own face um, as as their at home assignments, their homework. Um, so this is a really great example done by student Joe Renda. Um, this is where he was at as a freshman in high school and then four years of him working at it in high school. Um, so at the academy, we don't technically require a portfolio in order to apply. However, it is encouraged. Um, to show at least five pieces of artwork. Um, so what you're seeing here is kind of where he started as a student at the academy. Um, after just four months in our foundations courses, this was his improvement. So we do work really hard and do a lot of one-on-one -on -one up, um, with the students. What you're seeing here are images that are part of a critique or instructors do with students to show them how they've advanced. It builds not only those foundation skills, but it's also building confidence. We are accredited, so we do have humanities and sciences. They include anatomy, art, history, language arts, and social sciences. And even in these courses, we will be drawing, we will be creating. So we're definitely more of a visual program. The Career Services Department assists with interview techniques and helps coordinate job interviews. About 90% of our students in the first five years of graduation are actually employed in the art field. We do have a lot of artists that do choose to become independent artists or being a freelancer. That means having the ability to work from home, studio, or gallery. The key to success is obviously learning that time management, how to create those contracts. Um, and that's another thing we try to teach you at the academy. We try to make sure that all of our students get the opportunity to work with various types of medias and skills so that when they graduate, they have tons of opportunities as an artist. All of the assignments at the academy are also designed around actual careers you could be having within the field. So thank you guys. If you have any questions, I will put it in the chat box for you guys to go ahead and go to our website. I will stop sharing now. There we go. All right, awesome. Yeah, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm from Concordia University, Chicago. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my presentation as well. 
Um, we are a small private liberal arts school located about 10 miles west of downtown Chicago. So if you're familiar with Chicago, we're not quite in the heart of the city and I have some good um, kind of overhead visuals of that that we can um, look at in just a little bit. But I have QR codes throughout the presentation. So if you wanna get out your phone and scan those, it'll take you right to um, the, our website so you can get some more information on each of these topics. Um, but just to kind of go over some fast facts about Concordia, we were founded in 1864. Um, so we've been around for a long time and we were founded as a teacher's college. So um, if you're hoping to be a teacher someday or you're looking to get into education in some capacity, um, Concordia is definitely best known for that, but that's not the only program that we have anymore. We are a university with three colleges. Um, we are a, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod University. You don't have to be Lutheran to attend Concordia, but that is a big part of our heritage as a school. Um, all of our campus facilities dorms, athletics facilities, everything is located on our River Forest campus. So again, about 10 miles west of downtown Chicago. We have over 70 academic programs and we are Division III NCAA. So some of the most popular majors, again, education is a really big one. Um, everything from early childhood, elementary, middle school, and high school subjects. So if you want to do some combination of those, you certainly can. Um, but that's a pretty flexible program. Psychology, as well as sports management, any of our pre-med or health sciences majors. And I would also probably throw in criminal justice. Those are all very popular. If you have a particular major you're interested in, um, scan that QR code and you can run down the full list of what we offer. Um, we are divided into the College of Education, the College of Arts and Sciences, and then the College of Business. Um, so between those three, you're able to mix and match a double major or a minor, however is going to work best for you. Um, there's a lot to get involved in on campus outside of just being in classes. I'll touch on athletics in just a second, but if you're hoping to get involved in clubs or music or student organizations, there's a lot to, to jump in on. Um, we do have ministry and spiritual life opportunities on campus, as well as lots of different um, music groups. So you don't have to be a music major to be involved in music. If you play violin, for example, you can still be in our orchestra um, without being a music major. Um, intramural sports are super Super fun as well as some clubs like improv comedy or um, any of those other student government organizations as well. Um, being Division III NCAA basically just means that we don't offer athletic scholarships. Um, so if you're hoping to play a sport in college and um, keep that balance between athletics and academics at a really healthy balance, we really encourage our student athletes to be students first. That's why you're coming to college. So um, we have a really, we have about half of our students are student athletes on campus. So we have a really good, we've had a lot of practice making sure that that balance stays healthy for you in terms of being being, um, doing well in the classroom and competing well for Concordia as, as well. So if you are hoping to get connected with a coach or you want to see old stats or anything like that, that QR code will get you to the athletics page of our website. Um, and if you want to come on campus to visit or talk with a coach in person, you can certainly do that as well. So this is a good overhead of our campus. It is one city block, just one square mile. All of your classes, except for any internships, will be on our campus. We don't have satellite locations. Um, but within this, we have five residence halls, various styles of living. Typically, freshmen will live in what is called community style dorms, which is kind of like when you think of a dorm in a movie, that's kind of what it is. Longer hallway, wide hallway with your couches down the middle. Um, common area is in the middle of the hallway, so you can get to know each other very easily. Easily. There's also suite style living and apartment style living and there's a lot of variation. Each of the dorms are different. So depending on what your preferences are, you have a lot of say in where you would want to live for looking ahead for the next year. You can choose that early. Um, anywhere on campus though, there's free laundry, there's free water.
All right, we're gonna move on to Loyola University, Chicago. Great, thank you, Jasmine. Let me just share my screen here. Give me one second. All righty. So my name is Sarah and I am with Loyola University Chicago. Um, much like some of the other schools here, we're obviously located in the city of Chicago. Um, we are a Catholic Jesuit institution and um, our total population here is just about 17,000 students and about 12,000 of that is undergraduates. So that's really the population y'all will get to know. Um, I think we kind of toe the line nicely of, of being kind of a mid-sized school, having a lot of the social and academic resources that larger state institutions have, but we have pretty small class sizes on average Average, just about 26, which gives you a nice 14 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, so that really ensures that students are getting involved in the classroom, that they're participating, that they're building relationships with their professors, um, and that overall their experience is a little bit more um, enhanced and involved. Uh, we're located, uh, like I said, in the city, but we're on the north side of the city, kind of tucked away right up against the shores of Lake Michigan, as you can see in this photo. Um, and this is our main campus, but we do actually have two campuses within the city, the other one being located downtown um, at our Water Tower campus, which about two blocks off of the Magnificent Mile, kind of close to the Hancock Tower, if you're at all familiar with Chicago. Um, like I said, we are a Jesuit university, um, and that is something that's, of course, very close to our identity, but we have very, very diverse faith traditions here at Loyola. Um, we've got students coming from all 50 states and about 120 different countries, and faith-wise, about 55% of our students are Catholic and about 45% are not, um, and we really pride ourselves on being a home to all faiths, so know that faith is really your journey, and it's something that um, if you would like to uh, explore that at all during your time at, at, at Loyola, that you're welcome to do so, and we're here as a resource and a support for you. Um, we have about 80 plus majors and a little over 80 minors as well. Um, and we really encourage outside of the classroom learning, every student that comes to Loyola is required to do one sort of engaged learning course. And that can look super different to each student. Um, to some that might be a clinical if you're a nursing student, um, for a business student that could be an internship, for a biology student that could be research. Um, but every student really will get engaged and will get their hands dirty. Getting that hands-on experience is something that we really value at Loyola. Um, and that's represented by the over almost 700 different employers that have hired students for internships just in the last few years. Um, and we also encourage students to get out and explore and engage with the community um, through service, through service um, right in the neighborhood and beyond. Um, and through study abroad programs. Study abroad is very popular at Loyola. About one in three of our students will do that. And most commonly they'll go to our two camp one of our two campuses, either in Rome or in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. But we have about 150 programs total. So it's really um, up to you where, where and when you would like to go. In terms of academics, we are direct entry. So you'll be entered right into one of the eight colleges on the left-hand side here when you apply to Loyola based on the major that you put on your application. But know that it's quite easy for the most part to switch around between majors um, and really utilize those first couple of years while you're taking your core curriculum classes to see what you'd like and see um, what really major is gonna be the best fit for you. The one exception is our nursing school. We have a direct entry for your nursing program. So you do have to apply and be admitted as an incoming freshman only. Um, we also have 45 plus uh, five-year dual degree programs, which allow you to get a master's and a bachelor's within five years at Loyola. You apply for these as a junior and start taking master's as a senior. So that kind of just saves some time and money while making sure that you're sort of a, a standout applicant in your field. And then of course, as hard as we work, we play hard. Um, so we have about 250 different student organizations. We've got Greek life and we of course have our division one NCAA sports teams. The basketball team, the men's basketball team is about to play um, this Saturday in the March Madness tournament. They're doing great. Everybody tune in at I think 1240 on Saturday for that. And then in terms of our uh, application process, our application is free online. Um, you can apply right through our website or through the Common App or the Coalition App, whatever works for you, works for us. Um, that application opens on August 1st. And after, um, after it opens up, you can apply at any time and we operate on a basis of rolling admissions. So we'll start reading applications usually in October. Um, and from then on out, we'll be sending out decisions on a daily basis into the spring months. So we don't do early action or early decision or anything like that. 
Students are automatically reviewed for scholarships when they apply. Um, that's based obviously on your academic merit. And then of course, we always encourage students to file the FAFSA as well. Um, about 98% of our students will receive some type of grant or aid scholarship um, throughout their time at Loyola. So know that even though the cost of attendance of course isn't super low, um, that's something that we really encourage students to take advantage of. And we will certainly work with you to make sure that Loyola as, as, is as affordable as it can be for you. And then last, um, here's some contact information for myself. If you'd like to talk to current students, feel free to as well. And then a general contact the undergraduate admission office. And lastly, I will just plug that for any students watching this that might be admitted to Loyola already, we have our big event Loyola weekend coming up this weekend on Saturday, as well as Saturday, April 10th. It's the same event twice, so you have two chances to catch it. It'll be a great day that's completely virtual, so it's very accessible to you. Um, so I highly encourage you to check that out. It's a great way to connect with other current students, with prospective students, and with faculty and staff from all of our different departments. Um, with that, I will end and um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that concludes the presentation portion of our college fair today. But now we're going to transition to the Q&A. Feel free if you have any questions to drop them in the Q&A section. Um, I also want to encourage all of our amazing presenters to return. Feel free to turn your cameras back on and I will post a question to each of you and you will respond in the order in which you present it. So our first question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's see, really anything, the first six weeks after a student um, moves in to campus or starts classes on campus at SIU are called the weeks of welcome. And so we do different programming every night, anything from taking over our boathouse, we have, um, a significantly large lake on our campus in the middle of our campus we have a full boathouse that our students take over we take over the football field and show um, movies we do there's a lot of free food and as a college student you're going to learn to really appreciate free food there's a lot of free food um, and then it ends with our first football game in which the freshmen get to lead the football team onto the field so i would say that is my favorite tradition At Spalding, um, my favorite tradition that we have is a little bit of an odd one, but it's really quite fun. Every year around the Kentucky Derby, we host a rat race, which is where we race a bunch of rats around a track in our gymnasium. And um, all the students will pick their favorite and pick who they want to win. And then at the end of the um, event, there's a big celebration and a lot of the students end up taking the rats home with them and all sorts of stuff because they get connected with them. So it's always fun to watch. Everyone's super excited about it. At Columbia, I would have to say it definitely is our urban arts festival that we call Manifest. Um, it's in a way kind of like our homecoming, even though it is a major senior showcase. So it's where we get to send our seniors off. There's tons of fashion shows, film screenings, gallery openings, poetry readings, um, just so much to do. So we usually shut down a couple blocks in the South Loop of downtown Chicago. And we have people that come from all across the country to see our seniors. Um, our underclassmen can definitely assist with it so they can kind of see themselves there. We usually have a major headliner. Um, just a couple years ago, we had LMA headline um, for Manifest. So it's just a really awesome time. And I'm actually gonna throw in the chat, this past year was just so crazy, of course, with COVID and we always do Manifest in person, um, but our students were able to pivot and create a completely virtual experience for Manifest. So it was really cool. And it was so cool that we actually kept the website up and it's still um, functional for anyone who's interested in taking a look. Um, one last thing about Manifest. Our seniors have to go around in the film department and film as much as they can of Manifest. They stay up all night because they have to produce a video that then plays at graduation the next day um, with one of our music students um, actually getting an opportunity to have their original piece uh, played during that time as well. So it's just a really cool um, event that we have each year in May. Hey there. Um, for a cat 
American Academy of Art, we have two really great events. Um, it's hard to choose. It's either Halloween, which is also like a really awesome big event, but also Portfolio Day. Um, we host this every year for our seniors. Um, it's really awesome because we invite a lot of our alumni working in different industries throughout Chicago to come and view the portfolios of the students. And then we're always hosting like different kinds of games that they can participate in. Obviously, this is post COVID. Um, during COVID, we had to do more of a Zoom type of thing. But normally, it would be um, tons of games, tons of raffles happening during that time. Um, so it'd be a ton of fun. One of my favorite events at Concordia is called the Concordia Invitational Tournament. There are several Concordias. Concordia Chicago is not the only one. We were the first ones, though. Um, but there is a basketball tournament for men's and women's basketball where four of the Concordias all come together. We take turns hosting it. Um, so it's just fun, like a friendly competition kind of thing. We're not in March Madness as much as I really wish we were, but it's the same kind of energy that you can um, kind of just you know root your team on and get to know people from the other Concordias as well. So that's something to look forward to um, every January. And then at Loyola, um, one of my favorite traditions is our convocation each year, um, which is at the very beginning of the year. And um, it's when all of the freshmen, every single freshman walks through our green doors of our historic Kadaki library. It's one of the oldest buildings on campus. Um, those doors are only open on that day and one other day of the year. So at the very beginning of the year, the students get to walk through that door as a class and through a parade of students and faculty and staff all through the Loyola campus. It's a lot of fun. It's very hyped up. Um, sometimes Sister Jean makes an appearance. Um, and then uh, the other nice thing is that the last thing that you do as a student at Loyola, or one of the last things, is walk through those doors one more time during the senior toast right before your graduation. So it's kind of the bookends to, um, to your time at Loyola. Thank you all for sharing. Um, so one final question. And again, feel free to um, respond in the order in which you present it. The question is, uh, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Another good question. Um, I would say our mascot is our fun fact. We are the only Saluki in the nation. We are an Egyptian hunting dog. Um, so everything from Carbondale area down to Memphis, Tennessee along the Mississippi River is named after an Egyptian city. Um, because of how all of the rivers converge, um, leaves us with a lot of fertile soil. So our mascot is the Egyptian hunting dog. And I think that makes us pretty unique. I was gonna say, I mentioned it a little earlier in my presentation, but um, we're one of very few schools who focus on a block schedule. So our students really get the opportunity to focus on just the classes that they're taking at that time and not have to worry about when their professors decide in one week that everyone, every class you have, you have a final test in. So they get, it makes it a little bit more manageable for students. I think something that's pretty neat about Columbia, um, especially with myself being an alum as well, um, is our faculty members, our teachers at Columbia um, are actually industry professionals. So they have an education background, but they're actually doing what they're teaching. So it's really cool to be in a journalism class and you know your teacher rushing from like NBC5 in Chicago um, and coming to your class and telling you about stories that they're actually working on um, throughout the city of Chicago or being taught um, by uh, gospel artist Jonathan McReynolds, who just won a Grammy actually, um, and is also an alum of our school, and he is one of our adjunct faculty members at Columbia. So he teaches um, within our music department, uh, our gospel choir actually. Um, so I think it's really cool that you get an opportunity to really work hands on with the individuals that are doing something that you're really hoping to strive to do soon. Um, fun fact about our school, um, Hayden Sunbloom, one of the very first students to enroll at the academy, worked freelance for Coca-Cola and actually illustrated what's known as the modern Santa. So if it wasn't for his depiction of Santa Claus, we wouldn't see the jolly fat guy with the red um, outfit every year. So that's a fun little fact. 
Um, a cool fact about Concordia, we've been at the location that we're at in River Forest for 115 years nearly. Um, there was a fire at some point in the early days and all of it, you know, you know, big fire, whatever. And one of the pillars in our iconic pillars front of campus is left from that or, you know, urban legend. Nobody knows which one it is because they all look the same. So you'll have to come to campus, see if you can pick out which one that is. And my fun fact is that um, Loyola is ranked in the top 30 for the Sierra Club's um, Cool Schools, which is an environmentally friendly list. Um, and sustainability is something that's very important at Loyola. Um, I think it's pretty evident across campus. And one way that's represented is through our biodiesel lab, um, which produces all of the hand soap that you see on campus. So if you ever come to campus and use the restroom, you're using a very sustainable product made right in house. Nice. Thank you all for sharing uh, those fun facts about your institution. With that said, that concludes our college fair for today. Uh, but I want to thank our amazing presenters for joining us. And I also want to thank all of our attendees. Um, I do have a few closing announcements. So as you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions or so. Please respond to the survey. It's very helpful for us as we aim to improve the virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. Feel free to visit our website, strivescan.com slash Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.